Hey everyone, welcome to my own top live. My name is Gabrielle Thalen and I'm on the application engineering team at Empology. In today's session, I'm going to show off techniques to orthotics and brace design, um, focus more on the lightweighting aspect, but basically all utilizing Empology's computational modeling power and field driven design. Before I jump into the software, I'd like to show a couple of examples of things we've done in the past, um, starting with some of these orthotics and braces. So, Due to the way we represent geometry and topology, using the implicit model, it truly opens the door to unbreakable geometry. Any sort of operation like shelling, offsetting, Boolean operations, they truly never fail. And this um, enables the power to just bring in the scan, like on the left or on the right, we have this arm and being able to create like sockets or these braces that truly conform to that shape. And then what we can do is, okay, maybe we're bringing a different arm or a different limb, some sort of different geometry. All we have to do is select a different file path, bring it in. We can regenerate the same workflow um, on a completely different geometry. And that's all enabled by the way we set up our notebook and um, the implicit model. Another thing that I'd like to talk about, uh, also some work we've done in the past, is like orthotics for field-driven shoe soles. So, Another approach we have is field-driven design, basically a multifaceted approach to design in which we can um, bring in data, whether that be really complex data, as in this case, like a pressure map from someone's foot, so we're seeing higher pressure in red, um, lower pressure in the bluish, purplish areas, and as a result, we're saying, okay, higher pressure, let's put more material there where it's necessary. Lower pressure, let's have less material, have a more spongy um, kind of reaction when it comes to shoe sole. So, Within Entopology, uh, analysis is more than just for validation now. We can utilize it within the design and use it to drive our geometry. And again, this can be really complex data like simulation, or it can be really simple data um, like dragging a sphere around, which I'll show in our example next. All right, so we're in the software. Um, we're looking at my, my orthotic brace here. So let's call this an AFO or an ankle foot orthotic and I have our notebook here broken down in different sections as always you'll be able to download this file after the session um, take a look at it I added some comments hopefully it's nice and step by step for you so just going to start off with showing you this is kind of our end goal we did I'm showing I broke it off into different sections top region middle region bottom region just to show off different approaches to for example structural ribbing we'll go through being able to use like create a lattice from a volume mesh or the Voronoi lattice. And then at the bottom here, I did a little surface texturing. So here's where I ended at, um, starting off with like CAD import. So imported this brace. In this case, we have a CAD model. Um, we, we could use like an STL or something, whatever kind of import. We're basically, we have to offer interoperability. So being able to go from Bring in a CAD part or a mesh, go from CAD, implicit from CAD, mesh from CAD. Um, all those conversions exist within these utilities. So start off in with the import part, then I just said feature selection, conversion. Um, working in the software a lot, I kind of already know what my what I want to do, so how to prepare my geometry to do to get to that point. So I, I said like a bottom region. I knew I was gonna surface, I want to apply surface texturing to this face eventually. So I isolated that. I isolated a middle region, I have a top region, and I just converted those all to implicit. So all that's happening here, um, kind of just CAD prep, implicit prep, and then we jump into like latticing operations. So again, I broke it down into three, sec three sections, top, middle, bottom. Let's jump into the top region. So what I end up doing here is I actually created a lattice body from a volume mesh here. So you can see I meshed our geometry, I remeshed it, I created a volume mesh, and then I created a lattice body from that mesh. Some other things I did is you'll see that I have this solid rim top. Basically, I just select the faces or, yeah, the faces of the boundaries that I want to maintain. I didn't want to bring latticing all the way out um, as you can see here, because I have these features that are used most likely for like straps. So I didn't really want to put latticing there. I wanted to preserve kind of a rim around the entire geometry in which I could control the, um, that, that length. So if maybe that's a little too thick. Let's jump it down, bump it down to five, decrease it, 
end topology will rerun based off of that change, and you see we get our part. So again, if I want to thicken it up again, let's go back to 10, rerun, we get our part. So that's going on with the solid rim. I've created a variable in which I can change that, um, this distance here, and then we have this surface body, surface flat, surface lattice body from the volume mesh, sorry. So here I have a couple parameters. I can change the edge length. Right now it's a uniform edge length of eight millimeters. You'll see that these two parameters here have, um, they're light green and they have what we call our field icon, essentially saying we can uh, spatially vary this parameter um, based off of some sort of uh, field or modifiers, like I like to think of it. So right now they're uniform. I have a two millimeter. Uh, thickness, maybe it's too thick. Let's build it down to one, see what that looks like. So again, it's like happening very quickly, and that's all due to the implicit model. Um, so gonna keep those, I'll keep those uniform for now, and we'll get into the field-driven design in my next region. So top region, got that. Let's jump into this middle region here. So what I did for this area is, I'll show you what it looks like, is I did a little structural ribbing. So what I did is I basically did some, some, I selected faces. I was able to, since they were not a continuous face, normally if it's continue, continuous face, I can just go into lattices and select a conformal lattice from a cat face. But here I had several faces. So what I did is I just selected them all, stitched them um, through some other meshing thing. I was able to, just some meshing operations, I was able to create a lattice body from a quadrangulate mesh. So what we did here is, again, created a, a lattice from some faces. And then what I was able to do was then rib those uh, that lattice. So again, you see rib height and rib thickness are light green. They have the field icon saying we can spatially vary. So I mentioned in the previous example, we were able to vary the cell spacing of that shoe sole based off of pressure data. So we can definitely run simulation within end topology or bring in simu simulation results from other tools, bring that data into end top and start um, incorporating that data to design. Or we can like even dumb it down even more and say, um, let's just place a plane at one end of the structure saying, okay, if I want more support near the ankle, let's put a plane down here and say, um, let's have thicker uh, ribbing at the ankle area. So what I said here, I have a comment. You can put this ramp into this uh, rib thickness parameter, which right now is one millimeters. But with this ramp, what I'm saying is zero millimeters away from this plane. So the closer I am to this plane, let's just do a little side view here. Let's output a, um, in this case, rib thickness of eight millimeters. And as I move away from this plane up to a value of two mil 250 millimeters, which is the length of this kind of this middle region, um, let's vary from a maximum beam thickness of eight millimeters to um, a lower beam thickness of one millimeters. And as soon as I drop in that logic into that rib thickness uh, parameter, you see the logic follows. And we can go in here and now start iterating through different designs. So in truly, and topology, we're creating a environment for you to go through different design iterations very quickly. And now that we've created this relationship, we have this reusable workflow in which is now just a matter of fine tuning, getting to closer to that part that we want. So, so just these other operations here, again, I can control like the, uh, this is controlling the solid rim. Um, kind of like what I did up in this top region. Maybe I don't want lattices going all the way to the edge, so I create a, another rim variable. So here, maybe if I want to increase that to six, you'll see that fill in more here. So just a couple of variables there. I union everything together. We create a middle region part here. And now we can move down to the, the foot region or this bottom region, that's what I called it. So let's go down here. Let's take a look at this. Um, so another approach I showed, I wanted to show is being able to create a Voronoi lattice. In this case, I created a Voronoi lattice body on this entire uh, foot region. Um, but again, like some having lattices in these interfaces doesn't quite make sense. So again, creating like a solid rim, selecting faces in which I want to preserve 
In this case, it was this top face. Let me just show you in this final part here. It was this top face, the top of the this foot region where these interfaces or straps would be, and then the bottom. Um, so again, being able to preserve kind of those critical features. And but let's jump back down to the Fornoy lattice body. So what I was able to do, again, just some more meshing. I created a volume mesh from that initial uh, CAD region. And then what I have here is a Vornoy point count. So if we want to increase the number of Vornoy points, we can. If I want to decrease, so let's decrease it down to, let's decrease it to 1,000. See what that looks like. It should, should get more spaced out. Let's bump it back up to 2,500. So we just have control of the amount of points we're generating in that body. Another thing that we have here is, again, I can vary the Voronoi thickness. We have a field icon here. I can, if we're seeing higher pressure at the ball of the foot, I can increase the thickness there. Or another parameter we control is the spatial weighting. So spatial weighting is just, you'll see here, I have this ramp block, I have the sphere, so I'm kind of representing that as the ball of my foot. So again, something I could something simple as putting a plane or a sphere and using that as our modifier or a reference to how we're going to spatially vary our structure. Um, really, everything has a field within a topology. So in this case, again, just using a sphere, placing it here. I'm saying zero millimeters away from the sphere. I want the spacing, the cell spacing of this Fournoy lattice to be tighter, three millimeters in this case as you move away from the sphere, so when we start getting out to this region, um, I want a larger spacing because I don't, I'm not seeing maybe as much pressure in this area, so we can have a more spongy kind of reaction. So again, I have this ramp block, I have the logic. If I drop it into the spatial weighting parameter, you'll see my structure update based off of those parameters. So again, you see by the sphere where it's a, it's more dense as we're moving away from the sphere, it's less dense. So that's what the spatial weighting is controlling. And that's how we get that final foot region. Um, again, you can't really see the latticing going on in there because I preserved the top and bottom interfaces, but we we'll definitely have some latticing going on in this area. Um, so we're definitely cutting down weight in the, the top, middle, bottom regions. We're making this a little bit more ergonomic friendly. It's, there's more like breathable space here. Um, if you're wearing like a cast, I don't know if you've ever broken a limb when you're younger or whenever, um, but those casts, they're, it was, they're always super hot and like they're not comfortable. And so if you're going to be having something on for months on end or maybe years, you want something that's um, breathable, comfortable, but also you're not sacrificing like your performance. We want to make sure that we're still creating a geometry or a part that does what it needs to, but um, even better. So jump down to some other things that I kind of had some fun with. Within architect materials, we have the ability to apply texturing. Um, in this case, I just selected a face. I showed we're able to create like lattice bodies from uh, volume meshes, but we can also create lattice bodies from surface meshes. So in this case, I took the mesh of that face that I selected, remeshed it, and then created a lattice from that mesh, in which I later can then just uh, subtract away from the entire foot region. So now we have some surface texturing here, create some traction in this AFO. And yeah, let's jump down to my next section just to kind of wrap things up. So we have the original AFO, we have the optimized AFO. And due to the changes that I've made, if I want to make some more changes right now, we have a weight savings block in which, let's just open up the properties, you compare the weight savings in terms of the volume percentage between the two objects. So I have the optimized, or the lightweight body and the original body, and we see the percentage. So in, around this case, a little over 30%, 38% of weight decrease. So what's cool, again, if we can go in here and so let's go back to the solid rim or let's see, Let's decrease this count. Let's scroll down just so we can see our weight savings block. But again, all these variables are linked together. So if I make a change up here, you'll see the weight savings block run again, and we'll get a new value. So before it was 38%, now it's closer to 39.6%. So we've created a nice workflow in which we're making changes. We're going through design iterations, um, but we're not breaking anything. It's a truly parametric workflow. So yeah.
field-driven design, computational modeling, a um, little surface texturing in there and getting you a little preview of like this weight savings block. All right, so those are a few additional techniques to add to your approach towards orthotic design, incorporating lightweighting techniques and really just tapping into that whole concept of field-driven design. I hope you enjoyed the video and I thank you for watching. Please make sure to continue watching these videos, these live sessions, so you don't miss out on any more cool applications of entopology. And thank you for your time.